Hey guys, today the, the game we're trying is Remember the Flowers. Oop, that was weird. There's a loading screen until it unloaded screened. Come back. Full screen. Here we go. Okay. I thought we were ready and then we were less ready and then now we're more ready. Everything, everything's fine. I don't know why I always open this menu like I'm going to change anything in a, in a visual novel. This is a heavily, 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 heavily recommended game. But it's also not done yet, so... Hey! He's losing a lot of blood. Are you sure it's a good idea just to leave him? Of course not. We can't get back to the... in vehicle <laughs> while all those guards are around. But we can at least... It'll be fine. We'll just keep him covered. Hey, help me move those crates. I feel like I'm slipping in and out of consciousness. Where am I? Why can't I open my eyes? Hey, don't worry. You'll be okay. Who? Shh. Just rest. We'll be back soon. I can feel him lift my head and wrap something tight around it before placing something soft between me and the wall behind me. That'll have to do for first aid. Okay, let's move out. Right. Wait. Where are you going? Where? The classroom. Here we go. But as I was saying, I got a little surprised by what looked like time-sensitive prompts, so I kind of went for it. Uh, once you get past anyone recommending Ad Astra and Echo, this tends to be the next game that comes up. So that's pretty heavy praise. Also, uh, Perp, who did the two animations that we have so far, uh, and generally does a lot of fan comics for Ad Astra, and uh, mostly just those animations and a, and a third one for Echo. The other thing that he does fan things, fan comics for, is Remember the Flowers. Something hard hits my forehead, causing me to jerk my head up. If my lectures are so boring, feel free to leave. I look at my desk. He threw a chalk stick at me. It's quite the- th that's a really, really good throw, honestly. But this also doesn't necessarily look like a place that has... Desk? I guess they have a little fold-up desk. But it is a lecture hall. Yeah, there was that little shitty pork chop shaped folding thing. We're on the third row of the lecture hall, too. I don't know if I should be impressed or annoyed. Maybe I'm a little bit of both. Sorry, sir. I must have dozed off. I don't need you to tell me that. As a doctor, I hope not. I muttered myself. What was that? Nothing. Nothing. And with that, my professor scoffs and turns back towards the board, pulling a new stick of chalk from a box. What a geezer. Chapter 1. Freedom. I pick up the bit he threw at me. If I had some more confidence in my aim, I'd throw it right back at him. Wow. <laughs> Just seems like a bad call. Hey, I know what you're thinking. I turn to my right, to Diana. You always seem to. It's not worth it. I know, but... You can get back at him by proving yourself on the upcoming test. Ugh. I forgot about that. The past few nights have been kind of a blur on account of... Were you up practicing again? Maybe. Diana sighs at that, to which I grimace. You know, you've really nailed your impression of my, You know, you've really nailed my impression- uh, your impression of my mom. S several corrections mid-sentence. Good job, me. Well, what do you expect? You stay up all night. Every night. Who wouldn't be concerned about that? I know. I know. There's a lot of talking during class you're getting away with in the third row. She is right, as much as I don't want to admit it. Sorry, I'm just... I'm still adjusting to this new program. And I'm trying to figure out how to weave in my own personal projects. Diana pauses before placing an arm on my shoulder. 
No, don't be sorry. I shouldn't be nagging you, at least not this much. I laugh. No, I kind of appreciate it. It shows you care. Well, I'm glad that's coming through. I've always been a bit worried about you. You and me both. At the very least, you seem to be absorbing a lot of the information being thrown at you. It's almost unfair how well you do on exams, with how little you study. It's me! I, I don't even know if I learned how to study, which is a problem when I actually needed to in college at some point. But I just, like, got through high school and college for free for the most part, until I didn't. It's all thanks to you. You've helped me a lot in figuring out my study habits. Ah, he does study. What's that like? Clearly not enough. How much sleep did you get last night? Irrelevant. I'm sure. I try to yawn discreetly into my hand, but I guess it wasn't discreet enough as a professor whips around and zeroes in on us. I can feel Diana's arm tense up on my shoulder, as if we got caught doing something promiscuous. Something I should be made aware of, you two. I, what? 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 How did you not notice us talking, but you noticed a yawn? Also, f screw you. Yawns are super normal in college. Everyone's sleep deprived. Everyone's get trying to get through this mess, especially people that have an act, like a job they're juggling with it. Yawning is not something to, to chastise anyone for. It's not a cartoon where you're like, oh man, this is how it. I'm, I'm yawning because I'm so in it, uh, inattentive. It's like I'm yawning because I'm exhausted. <laughs> I ran on five hours of sleep for like four years when I was in college. Well, Diana stands up. Oh, well, you see, he was just helping me understand the new material about the frontal cortex. I was having trouble wrapping my head around it. Get it? Because it's a brain joke. <laughs> She's trying to play it off. Oh, is that so? Diana, I expected better from you. How dare you... Actively take an interest in the subject and learn more about it. In a, in a, in a school! <laughs> and, to, and to not associate with anyone who could drag you down. I feel myself getting heated. Who the hell does this dick think he is? Would the fine gentleman like to stand up and share with the rest of the class? There are some whispers and murmurs across the room, all directed at us. I look in my peripheral. Diana has that, oh, I fucked up, look on her face. Still, I stand up. With all due respect, sir, I... Which isn't much. I'm aware you're on tenure, but I don't think it's wise to force your job on your unemployed students. Or did you forget how much our tuition costs, along with giving a proper explanation on the frontal cortex? Gasps erupt from the rest of class. And that student was Albert Einstein. And everybody clapped. I feel hot in the face, but I'm keeping cool. I can't say the same for our professor. I think he just snapped his new stick of chalk in two. I can see him squirm to find some kind of legal retort. Tenure or not, I'm pretty sure throwing shit at me is grounds for removal. Maybe not, but I'm not going to crack for the likes of him. I shift my hand to my hip. I'm waiting, Professor. Now he's the one looking red in the face, more so out of anger. I bet that's the most blood flow he's gotten in quite a while. We're talking boners. He grumbles something ins insulting under his breath before turning to angrily write with his now broken chalk. I am saying stupid shit this episode already. <laughs> That's what I thought, asshole. Imagine getting owned by one of your students in front of a hundred people, which looks like like a hundred people. It's a big classroom. <laughs> Just stepping down. <laughs> like, what a, what a, what a dyna, which is what a scenario to, to play out. I sit back down and take a deep breath. I'm not cut out for these kinds of performances. Neither is Diana. We look at each other, somewhat mortified, before bursting out in laughter. Oh, that'll go over well, too. Just laughing behind his back. <laughs> oh my goodness, they're making a lifelong enemy. 
It's thankfully covered by the bell. I help Diana get, gather her notes. She has a real knack for organized chaos. I guess I've rubbed off on her as well. We make our way out of the lecture hall, still laughing. Glad to see you've been taking notes from Damien. Oh yeah? How so? Well, you were pretty, a, a pretty timid guy growing up. I remember having to beat up your bullies for you. To be fair, you are pretty good at kung fu. Damn right. She shows off a standard kick. I have to admit, I wish I had her coordination. What's your point, though? Well, let's see. How long have you been dating, Damien? Hmm. I think our first anniversary is coming up. Oh, wait, really? I had to plan something. Anyways. Wait, don't change the subject. Anyways, as I was saying, you were pretty quiet growing up. Sure, you grew out of it a bit, but once you met him, you started getting, I don't know, more confident? What can I say? He's my better half. I give an extremely gay sigh, to which Diana reports, uh, snorts, wow. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, he certainly has left an impression on you. I guess being around the star of the college basketball team will do that to you. Oh my god, stop. Someone's gonna hear you. I try to shush her, but she just covers another laugh with her hand. Guess you got some more confidence to build. Besides, weren't you on the Jumbotron together at the end of the last game? I think I'm getting a phone call. Diana crosses her arms, and I struggle to pull out my phone. She has a knowing expression on her face. I slide my phone on and hold it to my face. Hello? Oh, hey mom. Yeah. No, school's going great. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. No. I'm still adjusting, but it's going okay. Then my phone actually starts ringing and vibrating in my hand, ruining my attempt at fooling Diana. Who am I kidding? Who'd be fooled by that? I think your phone is ringing. Thank you for telling me. I'll be picking it up now. I give a slightly annoyed huff as I actually go to answer a phone call. It's from Damien, and my face instantly brightens. Hello? Hey, sorry to call. We're about to head out for our afternoon run. I didn't have time to text. I just wanted to know if we're still on for tomorrow night. Yeah, no worries. And uh, I'll make sure everything's ready. You make sure to drink plenty of water, okay? Okay, you got it, dude. See you at the cafeteria for dinner. You know it. Love you. Stay safe. Love you too. An exaggerated smooch, Damien, makes... It the exaggerated smooch Damien makes is loud enough for Diana to hear. I almost cringe, but eventually do the same thing for him. I can hear him giggle before hanging up. Imagine starting this game with no... It's impossible because of the storefront and everything, but imagine just getting jump scared by furry without, without knowing it at first because it takes a little while to show up. I sigh happily as I stuff my phone in my pocket before turning my attention toward Diana. What? You guys are so cute. She's holding her cheek, gushing over us as she usually does. Stop. It's true though. Ah, uh, young love. Diana giggles again, and with that we continue our walk back to our dorms. So. What you got planned for tomorrow? Heh. <laughs> it's a secret. Oh ho. Don't get any ideas. Oh, I would never. I roll my eyes at that, before getting my phone out to show something to her. We're going to a show tomorrow. Oh, exciting. Kind of surprised. Didn't know you were into that kind of scene. I'm really not, but... 
Damien was so excited that this band was coming to town, I couldn't say no. I pause. Also, I do want to get out of my comfort zone. Even if just a little bit. I getcha. You guys need a DD? Wouldn't hurt. You sure you wouldn't mind? Not at all. I got tomorrow off. I'll text Damien to let him know. Thanks, Diana. I appreciate it. It took me a second to register that she doesn't mean double date, she means designated driver. Of course. I'm like, how is a double date a service? We, ca we chat about this and that for a little while longer before coming to split between the dorms. They're not co-ed, so we don't actually live together. Oh! Before I forget, you want to visit the greenhouse this weekend? I don't know. I'll have to see how I'm feeling the next morning. You're not going to have a day... You're not going to have a two-day hangover. How about Sunday afternoon? I sigh through my nose. Can't get around it. I have been skipping on... on I have been skipping out help, helping Diana the past few weekends while figuring out everything on this side of the campus. I'm already hanging out with Damien Friday night, and I do owe her one now. There's really no excuse. Yeah, sure. I'll see you Sunday. Want to meet for lunch, then head over? It's a date. I'll see you then. Yeah, sounds good. We wave to each other as we walk down our respective paths home. As usual, I wave to the dorm mother. As usual, I skip the faulty elevator and take the stairs. As usual, I make my way home into a dorm room. I've only been here for about a month, but at least I've got this routine down pat. Being in the master's program has its perks. I call it a dorm room, but it's almost like an apartment, complete with a kitchenette. What's best is I have the place to myself. I'm gonna- This place looks fucking incredible. Look at this- look at this background. You can, can't really make it out, but like... Girl, that's a huge couch. That kitchen just looks like an actual kitchen. There's a dining table. Shelving, multiple rooms. I'd like that now. 3,000 more Patreon subscribers, please. <laughs> What's best is I have the place, uh, have the place to myself. Well, mostly. Damien spends the night a lot, too. That sounds like only an improvement. I toss my bag on the couch before grabbing a glass of water, promptly chugging it. I'm not used to the summer heat around here. As I strip off my overshirt, I look, I look toward the bathroom. I kind of want to take a shower right now, but decide to do it at my usual time right before bed. I sleep better that way. I say that, but I'm gearing up for my afternoon nap without any distractions. I can't nap, it ruins my day. It's also borderline impossible. I don't know I don't know how the fuck anyone falls asleep in the middle of the day, just ever. But whenever I do succeed, I just feel like garbage for like the next five hours, and I'm like, this was a mistake. I always just power through. <laughs> it's not worth it. I plug in my phone, briefly lighting up the pic of Damien holding me up from behind as I flail in his grasp. I smile at it before flopping face first into my squishy pillow, not even bothering to pull over the blankets. It's still a bit too hot for that. My eyelids start to get heavy, and I fall asleep from my afternoon nap. Then I wake up on a moon full of wolves? Weird dream. There's a strange ringing in my head. It's quiet, but just loud enough that I can't ignore it. I'm having trouble opening my eyes. How long was I out? It almost feels like a headache, but it's concentrated only in the back. Lifting my arm is a struggle, too. Wait, am I... sitting? A groan escapes my dry throat. How long have, my, have I been sitting like this? With all of my might, I lift my hands up to my face and try to rub my eyes open with my palms. Okay, I think we're skipping back to the beginning us. I think we're somebody that something bad happened to and we suffered a head wound or something. 
and we're remembering the past in this in the what has been the most of the game so far but something bad has already happened and we're going back to that wait what is all this i'm feeling i pull it and it tugs at my scalp it's my hair i'm not lucid enough to panic quite yet or maybe i am and this is just a weird dream in any case after some more rubbing i managed to crack my eyes open This is a very different location. I'm sitting in an alleyway that I've never seen before. Eyes move, uh, Even moving my eyes to look around is a struggle at first. I just woke up, but I'm already feeling exhausted. I take a few breaths, which is somewhat alarming. I thought you couldn't breathe in dreams. Regardless, little by little, I start moving what I can. I can wiggle my toes and move my arms. I kind of need to move them. I kind of need to move them as my hair is getting in the way of my vision. I can hold my bangs down to nearly my sternum. The length isn't what's most concerning, though. It's the fact that my hair is almost in a natural shade of white. That aside, I try to feel around. I'm against a wall, and my next goal is to try to stand up. My joints pop like mad. Seriously, how long have I been sitting here like this? It should not be this hard to just stand up, but my knees are trembling. I thought we were going to like fall back asleep and then go back to our visions of the past, like our, our memories, but it seems like we don't know what's happening here. So, I'm not, so I, I'm not actually sure what the framing device is right now. We don't recognize ourselves or where we are. Nearly hugging the wall with my side, I managed to step up, to stand up, albeit quite hunched over. Something slides off of me, but before I can look down to see what it is, I start to stumble. I jerk a bit as a wave of disorientation washes over me. My vision blurs. I can see stars. I feel dizzy, and I can't keep my breathing steady. It doesn't hurt. Nothing does. Not even the sudden upchuck of stomach acid I expel onto the ground below me. I clutch my, st my stomach as I fall to my knees, breathing, erratic. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. But I feel like it should. I'm more confused than scared. I don't have enough time to process what little information I have as I throw up whatever was left in my stomach. It just smells like acid. And just like that, I'm, sit I'm back to sitting against the wall. I shut my eyes, but I can still see colors swirling around the inside of my eyelids. Without any strength, I just sit there and pant. The taste of stomach fluid still comes up my throat with each breath, burning my mouth. I heave again, but nothing comes out this time. Nothing but a guttural belch. Okay. Okay. Calm down. Calm down. I say to myself, barely recognizing my own voice. Not surprising. It feels like the only thing to wet my throat is... It, it feels like the only thing to wet, to wet my throat in decades was my own bile. I clutch my head to try and control the spinning I'm feeling. After several minutes of trying to breathe calmly, my vision starts to settle. I still feel disoriented, but I can at least make out what's in front of me now. Again, I look around, trying to get my bearings. As I noted earlier, I'm in some alleyway. I don't know where, though. Tilting my head up, I can see that it's night. The buildings around me seem to stretch taller than they should. I look further in front of me. There are boxes blocking the alley. They're stacked pretty high. I look down to the ground and something catches my eye. Slowly, I bend over to reach over it, not wanting to upset my stomach anymore, and grab what seems to be a jacket. It's pretty big. I can stretch it out far past something that fit me. I wonder who left this here. 
Were they trying to cover me? Ah. Somebody like somebody that had to go somewhere basically left me for dead in the first little description and they tried to cover me. And so that person was probably a furry because that's a huge jacket. And so that's so it seems to be that this is continuous with the earlier memory. Whatever's going on here. The part where there was no visuals yet. Another headache hits the back of my head and I clutch the side of my face. Ugh, starting to feel nauseous again. I rest my head against the wall and immediately feel uncomfortable. It didn't hurt, but I can tell I shouldn't have done that. I reach for the back of my head. I feel bandages, and a lot of them, along with what I can only assume is crusted up blood. How the hell did I end up like this? The last thing I remember was... was... Hanging with Diana. And making plans with Damien. Okay. So I think we're back to my original first theory where we're in some future period remembering our past. But the, the reason why we're confused about why, where and what we are is that we have amnesia probably from a head wound. But that head wound did not wipe out everything up until that point. It's just our recent, our short-term memory is gone right now, but our long-term memory is acting up. I try to recollect more, as much as I can. It's all scattered, like a haze is blocking me from my own memories. Oh, fuck. I exhale with a haggard breath. I'm still hoping this is just a weird dream, because I can't even remember my own name. I was going to comment on how it's a little confusing to read the dialogue, because, uh, there's parts where I blank, because we don't have a name, I'm just used to having a name tag of some kind, like Chase or Marco. And so when our lines come up, sometimes I reflexively think I'm, I'm voicing the wrong character. But now we know why. I then spend the next half hour alternating between doing breathing exercises and having an existential crisis. The more I think about myself, the more I realize I don't know who I am. I'm thinking clearly, but there's not much to think about. All I know is Diana and Damien are very close to me and I wish they were here right now. I feel a sort of sadness at all the things I can't remember. All my relationships and experiences, just gone. One thing's for sure. This is no dream. Maybe it's a nightmare? Uh, nightmares are dreams. <laughs> just so we're clear. If it was, it'd be the most boring nightmare I've ever had. I don't know. Uh, sitting in an unknown location, just absolutely sure that you've lost every memory that's dear to you, and, and you might never see anyone you care about again, and you don't know what's happening, would be a pretty fucked up nightmare. I think I've actually had nightmares that are not that, but on a similar existential mess. It's always much worse when it's not just like, oh, it's a monster, oh, I'm falling. I say that, but I'm still fairly spooked. I move past the notion that I'm dreaming, however. The sensations I've felt and felt since just several false starts. Good job, me. This, but the sensations I've felt since waking up are too real. Even so, periodically I pinch the skin of my forearm. I can definitely feel I'm pinching the skin, but I don't feel any pain. It's basically numb. Same with the back of my head. That blow I must have taken did a serious number on me. It doesn't take a doctor to figure out that that's probably why I can't remember anything. Interesting that the memory that that they did have called back specifically to a lecture about the brain, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Maybe that's why that specific memory played. Speaking of doctors, I replayed the memory of myself and Diana laughing at a professor. It's the only entertainment I have. Well, kind of. I also think back to that earlier memory. I've come to accept the fact it was real. Despite the fact that my eyes were closed, it all felt so visceral to the point that I can say it happened. Someone mentioned my loss of blood, and someone else covered me up. 
Someone left me here. But who? All I have to go on is this jacket they left behind for me. It's simple enough, but I don't recognize the style. Not that I can talk about fashion. It's better than what I have on, which is a film of puke at this point. I can't tell if I'm wearing a hospital if, if I'm wearing hospital scrubs or a prison uniform. Wish I at least had some socks. The more I wake up, the more I realize how cold I am. I sigh. Eventually, I look towards the other side of the alleyway. I don't think I could move those boxes easily, if at all. But I should at least try to look for help. I'm starting to get annoyed with my body, as I still struggle to do the simplest of tasks. I can hear my panting echo softly through the alley, along with something else. The sound of footsteps. I try to hold my breath. I think someone's on the other side of those boxes. Do I call out to them? Do I hide? Not that there's much room to hide. Whatever's out there starts pulling the boxes out one by one. I don't know what's in those boxes, but I don't, they, don't look e they don't look easy to throw around. They're just chucking them like it's nothing. I can feel my, ease, my knees start to tremble. A chill runs down my spine, and my teeth start to, to chatter. Both of my knees give, and I'm back on my ass against the wall. The fear is starting to get overwhelming, and my vision starts to blur again. There aren't many boxes left, and something starts to show between the, the cracks. A light. A flashlight. Before I, before I know it, the ray of light is completely covering me. It's a task to lift my arms to block the beam, and even harder to keep them in the air. I was already struggling to move, without fearing for my life. I don't think I can take much more of this. I'm getting overstimulated. I feel like I'm shutting down. Just as I start to succumb to my panic, the light suddenly shifts. Slowly, I open my eyes, peeking through the cracks of my fingers. We are covered in scars. What's going on there? I've been wondering periodically whether or not we're human, or if we're like an artificial creature of some kind. I guess technically I didn't know if I was even a human or furry at, up until now. I just knew, knew that our friend was human. But we didn't know about ourselves necessarily. I think it hadn't been pointed out yet. But, uh... I imagine the scars aren't normal. But I'm wondering whether or not they're like weird artificial lines on like an uh, artificial body that we've like woken up in like Soma style. Or if it's uh, just the same body with the same continuity. We're setting up sci-fi. Look at this guy's get up. The person... No. The beast man holding the gun moves one step closer. Is he gonna be a person? Oh, does person mean human inherently in these settings? I wonder. Don't move. He says it in a gruff, commanding voice. If I was cold before, I'm frozen now. I'm just sitting here. Trying to follow his movements the best I can, with what little I can see. Through the slits of my fingers, I can ascertain one thing. He's a wolf, and a tall one at that. The wolf circles around me. Actually, is this a sci-fi getup? It kind of looks like a taser gun, actually, but I thought it might be a sci-fi gun. The wolf, the wolf circles around me. I can see him clearly in my peripheral. He can see my face now, along with the terrified expression I'm wearing. Gun or not, he could rip me to shreds with just those claws. Not that there's much to rip apart. There's always a funny detail, like, with anthro characters and... Like, I know it's, a, it's, a, it's always a thing with werewolves, right? Is that you, uh... They have claws. Look at them go. But, like... 
Wolves' claws aren't very helpful for that, right? I don't think they are. Cats have claws that are helpful in combat. I don't really know. I don't think wolf claws amount to much. I don't stand. I don't stand a chance at running in my current condition. Hell, I can barely stand up. So I sit here, waiting to see what's going. What he's going to do to me. He's a few feet away, gun still pointing at me. Upon closer inspection, it looks like the size of a pistol, but it doesn't look like any model I've ever seen. The wolf shifts his head, looking all over my body. My teeth start chattering again, reverberating through the alley. He walks up closer with intent. I shut my eyes. It's all I can do. This is the worst my breathing has been since I woke up. I can feel my empty stomach churn, and my dehydrated eyes strain to tear up. The only thing that pulls me out of my panic attack is the feeling of something soft under my chin. Hey, this is the redesign, huh? I saw on Twitter there was a before and after where they redesigned this character's art. Everyone just called everyone mostly just called him stinky because <laughs> that's that's what happens on that Twitter. Uh, he starts to slowly lift my head with his paw. Hmm. His paw pad feels like worn leather under my chin. His breath is hot on my face. Now more than ever, I wish this was just a dream. The wolf squints his eyes and speaks to me. I can't make it out, as the ringing in my ears is too loud. Uh, uh, is all I can muster. The wolf closes his eyes before pulling his hand away. He sits in front of me, where I level with each other. I think he's saying that? You okay? Huh? He pauses once more before repeating himself again. Are you okay? I don't respond. I'm not in the right state of mind to. He seems to pick up on this. Calm down. I'm not gonna hear I'm not gonna hurt you. The wolf places the gun he's holding on the ground and slides it to the other side of the alley. See? If I wanted to, I would have already. That's one gun gone, but what about the one on his back? My eyes veer to it, which he notices. I'm not taking that one off. It'd be too much work. He states matter-of-factly, before switching to a crisscross position. I mean, you could have just holstered the first one, frankly. You're okay. You're okay. He looks at me in the eyes again, before holding his paws apart in front of me. Breathe in. He pulls them closer, almost in a clapping motion. And breathe out. I'm slowly transitioning from panic to confusion, which I'd say is an upgrade. For some reason, the inflection of his voice sounds weird. He's speaking English, undoubtedly, but something about it's off. I can't put my finger on it. Is it a dialect? Regardless, I do as he says, and start to match my breathing with his movements. I'm wondering if it's a, a translator, or if we're enough in the future or something that like it, uh, it's just like a like like language has drifted a bit. We do this for a while, and slowly but surely it seems to be working. With enough time and effort, and with the help of this wolf, I bring myself out of my self-induced panic attack. After one final, deep breath, I manage to get back to just breathing through my nose. I'm still breathing faster than I would like to, but it's a start. There. How are you feeling? He takes a deep breath as well. I guess that did take longer than it needed to. Tired. And dizzy. I finally drop my hands down for a moment before moving to hold my head. It feels like I swapped a panic attack for a headache. I'm not surprised. 
the wolf gets closer to me, to my head. Wow. I really don't like how close he's getting. You've lost a lot of blood. Gently, he holds my chin and shifts me to the right, revealing the back of my head. He leans in closer and takes a few sniffs. I can feel his breath again, and I start to get apprehensive. I instinctively pull back. Gentle or not, this really isn't helping with my anxiety. You're still scared. Huh? He leans in again. I can feel the wetness of his nose on my forehead as he trails around my head before sniffing around some more. Ah. Uh, sorry. The wolf says bluntly before he pulls back. Habit of mine. Uh. Okay. What's your name? He asks suddenly. I literally don't have an answer for him. I don't know. The wolf doesn't seem phased by that. What do you know? Uh... I don't know. My emotions feel like a metronome, swapping between scared and confused the drop of a dime. I'd like to believe he's right. If he wanted to hurt me, he would have already. And now that I think about it, I don't think he could hurt me either way, on account of me not feeling any pain. Well, that's not true. He could break my legs, and even if I couldn't feel it, I'd be at his mercy. That flash of imagery in my head makes me shudder. Wait here. Huh? His voice snaps me out of my imagination. He stands up, and then moves near the alley entrance. I cock my head as I try to see what he's doing. The wolf waves a paw over his right wrist. A small screen lights up in front of him. He seems to be coming out of a it seems to be coming out of a bracelet he's wearing. I squint, trying to make heads or tails of it. Seriously, where the hell am I? We certainly don't have this kind of tech back on Earth. Whatever he is doing, he's tapping furiously away on it with his fingers. For a moment, he places a free paw over his chin. He looks deep in thought. All of a sudden, he turns his attention back to me, looking me over once more before typing away again. He waits. Then I hear something. A notification? Then he starts tapping away for about a minute before sliding the screen away. Okay. Can you stand? I'm going to take you home now. Ah. Uh, here. Here. The wolf, wait, the wolf walks up to me before starting to get me on my feet. He carefully, gets, he carefully gets under my armpits and lifts me up slowly, trying to keep me stable. How's that? Wait a minute. I stumble nearly to my knees, and he catches me. It's okay. I can carry you if you want. I said wait! I raise my voice, and the wolf's eyes widen a bit. I push him away, choosing to slump against the wall again. At least I'm still standing, even if barely. Who the hell are you? Where the hell am I? How do you know where I live? Even though my adrenaline from earlier has worn off, I'm starting to get hit with rising paranoia. I barely even know where I live. You can't seriously expect someone with a head injury to just go with someone they don't even know, do you? Hmm. <laughs> Quite feisty for someone with a head injury. The wolf sighs before walking over, then sits down in front of me again so that I'm looking down at him. I'm, gl I'm kind of glad he did. My knees feel like they're about to give out, and I sit back down on the ground. I don't know how to explain this without alarming you, but you're going through a fairly common experience around here. He then taps the side of his head. Barring the head injury. What do you mean? The wolf scratches the back of his head. It's best that you know as little as possible, unless absolutely necessary. That's a horrible way to build trust. 
I didn't mean to say that out loud, but I did mean it. I don't need your trust. I could take you by force if you, if you really want me to. The fur on his neck bristles and my fear spikes again. He flattens back down before rubbing the back of, my, of his neck. So this is interesting because it suggests that whatever's happening here is common. I mean, that, that's not, not suggest, that's what he said, but I mean like... Maybe people arriving here and not knowing what's happening is common. Either arriving here or losing their memories. But not that without a head injury. Which means that this experience doesn't always involve a head injury, apparently. The question of it is, is whether we, are, we haven't relocated or not, or if we've just lost time. Relax. It won't come to that if you just cooperate. I'll say this. I've done this before. Many times. Done what? Taking humans home. Amnesiac or not. How do you know where I live? The wolf pauses. Do you know where Resume is? Resume? That's a on-the-nose name, potentially, huh? No. Should I? The wolf exhales, almost in relief. Whether or not you do doesn't matter to me. Resume is one of the few cities that's mainly just humans around here. Okay. So where's around here? The wolf shakes his head. We can talk about that later. Honestly, we've dallied long enough. Just know that I have contacts there. He lifts his paw, pointing to that weird bracelet. I've confirmed a meeting point to get you home safely. I open my mouth, to which he interrupts. And before you ask any more questions, I gave a description of your appearance and they matched it up with someone who's missing. I close my mouth. I guess you have done this before. I'm kind of surprising myself. I'm taking all of this in way too quickly, aren't I? I guess when your head is nearly empty, anything new becomes acceptable. Regardless, I'm going to at least try to remain skeptical. How do I know you're not just setting me up? The wolf smirks at that. You don't. What would you be able to do in your current situation if I was, though? He has a point. Don't know where or who I am. I wouldn't be able to make it far. I sigh. I can't tell if my ears are still ringing or if there are alarm bells going off in my head. I resign myself. I really don't have a choice. Okay. Fine. It's not like I trust you, though. I don't even, it's not, it's not like I trust you or anything, Baka. That's wise. I won't do anything to hurt you. You can count on that. We'll see, I guess. With that out of the way, the exhaustion is starting to catch up. And I scoot back to my familiar spot against the wall. I can barely stand up, let alone walk. Not to already impose, but you wouldn't happen to have any food or water, would you? The wolf thinks it over before turning down the alley, listening. Hmm. Yeah. We could probably have a quick bite to eat. Let me just... He walks over the pile of crates and starts stacking them again, providing some decent coverage. There. That should be fine. I doubt anyone will go through the trouble to get through that. Besides you? Fair enough. We're gonna eat here. I thought he was looking down the alley to look for a restaurant or something. Actually, that does make me curious. Before the wolf sits down, he plops the bag he had slung on his shoulder onto the ground. It looks a bit weird. Almost like a violin case with its angles straightened out. Like an awkward trapezoid. Wait, I'm getting distracted. So, how did you know I was here? Hmm? Oh. The wolf taps his snout with a couple fingers. It was faint, but I could smell you a couple blocks away. He pauses. 
Well, your blood anyways. I see. Well, why did you go through the trouble of finding me? The wolf takes out what seems to be a canteen and places it in front of me, along with some kind of package wrapped in what feels like plastic. Afterwards, he moves to sit next to me against the wall. I take on a lot of odd jobs. I wasn't looking for you per se, I was just in the area when I caught your scent. He takes his own package, ripping it open. Some kind of food? You should consider yourself lucky. From the looks of it, you wouldn't have lasted another day or two. Looking over myself, I'd say he's right. I'm skin and bones, with an empty stomach and a concussion. Now that I think about it, I'm kind of surprised I made it this long. Slowly, I lean forward to pick up the canteen thing. I can feel liquid inside, but I don't see a way to use it. It's a rectangular shape with no discernible opening. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Hmm? What? He looks up from what he's eating. There's water in here, right? How do I open it? He swallows. Oh. He leans over and slides his finger across the top. A small opening appears. There. It's got some nutrients in it that should help. Just drink slow. Mm-hmm. I do as I'm told. Maybe it's because I'm so dehydrated, but this water does taste pretty rich. It's almost... heavy. I choke on it for a moment, but swallow it down soon, not wanting to waste any of it. I smack my lips a bit, as if it's alcohol. You okay? I yeah Just a bit strong. Just drink it slowly. I nod, a tad embarrassed for my lack of coordination. Regardless, I'm thankful for the drink. My throat even starts to feel better in just a few minutes. Not wanting to drink it all myself, I mimic what he did earlier to close the canteen. Hmm. You know, on second thought. The wolf reaches over and takes the package he gave me. I'm just going to take a guess that, judging by how you reacted to that water, you could use something a bit lighter to eat. He rummages once again through his bag before handing me a small parcel. That should be a bit lighter. It doesn't really taste like much, but it's got some protein. Is it tofu? Curious, I reach over and pick it up. It feels like it's wrapped in paper, though there's no labels. Even with what little strength I have, I open it fairly easily. What's inside kind of looks like saltine crackers, but brown instead of vanilla. I lift one up and smell it. It's like beef jerky, but only faintly. If I'm being honest, they don't look very appetizing. Beggars can't be choosers, though. I take one of the cracker things and bite into it. Thankfully, he's right. It doesn't take like, taste like much. A little salty and a bit sweet, but not much else. Definitely the texture of a cracker. I'm just glad I got something to drink. After a few minutes of eating, I look over to the wolf. He's enjoying his meal. At least I think he is. Man, how did I end up here? Now that I have time to think, I realize something. I don't recognize his voice from the ones I've heard before. I decide to speak up about this. Oh, right. I think there were people who left me here, but I can't really remember. The wolf looks over to me with a curious look. Do you remember anything about them? Uh, no, not really. Just a little bit of conversation, probably right after I got this dent in my head. I pat the crumbs off my shirt, trying to hold the jacket I woke up with. I have this, but that's it. The wolf looks it over before he grabs it from his hands and smells it. Then he scrunches his nose. 
I guess he didn't like how it smelled, because he balls it up and tosses it to the side. I think it would be best to leave it here. Take my word. Oh. Okay. I start thinking to myself. Whoever left that for me. I think they had the best, my best interests in mind. Their voice seemed reassuring, at least. Although, to be fair, they did leave me here like this. I should be more careful. A voice isn't enough to judge a character. Oh, wait. What's your name? We had such a shaky start that I completely forgot to ask. My name? Hmm. He pauses, then sighs. Cooper. Just don't tell anyone. Why? You ask a lot of questions, you know that. To be fair, you're making it hard not to. Just eat your food. Okay. I would hold on to that jacket. If you have amnesia, it's like one of the only clues you have about anything that's happened in the past. You might want to know who that person was. Once again, I do as I'm told. Sitting in this strange alley with this strange beast man holding this strange food. I wonder, how would Damien react to the situation if he were here with me? I bet he'd try to carry me so that he could get as far from this place as possible. A little fragment flashes through in my mind of Damien giving me a piggyback ride. I think he convinced me to play basketball with him, and he whooped my butt. I remember being tired, just not as much as I am now. I sigh. I really miss his piggyback rides. I don't think this resume place is my home. It's not much, but I have some memories of where I lived. Oh. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how to make any sense of all this. I'm not surprised. I just know one thing. I really want to go home. Well, as far as I'm aware, Resume is your home. He pauses. Even if it's not, Resume is known for getting people back to where they belong. What do you mean? Well, Resume is a hot spot for humans, almost a sanctuary. I'm sure we get you back to wherever you came from. A hot spot for humans like they're rare. A sanctuary. I'm not th I'm thinking there's not a lot of humans at this point. <laughs> I hope so. Cooper flicks his ear at that. You, you, you say hot spot in sanctuary and I think uh, refugees. Cooper flicks his ear at that. I guess he can sense my dejection, though I'm not really hiding it. Where do you come from? Nowhere worth mentioning. He dodges my question and stands up, listening intently. I think it's time we head out. How are you doing? Ah, uh, well, better. But I don't think I'm in any condition to move around too much. Can you walk? I grunt as I try to stand up. It wasn't much, but the combination of water and protein crackers is at least giving me enough strength to stand and walk a bit. Kind of. But I don't think for very lo far or long. We'll take breaks, and if it comes to it, I can carry you. Okay. I stretch, popping all my joints again, but this time it feels really good. Just glad to be off my butt for a bit. I should mention it, but we're out of the alley, so it'd be best to keep talking to a minimum. Why? Hooper's stance shifts, looking forward, looking toward the opening of the alley and then back at me. There are people trying to find you as we speak. And that's bad? Very. I can't disclose much, but I'll say this. Your life will be a living hell if they find you. 
Maybe it's just because I'm getting more lucid, but I'm not really phased by that. That kind of worries me. So, wait, are you under contract? In a sense. As I've said, I've done a lot of escort missions. It tends to be easier the less people know. That doesn't sound skeevy or anything. Cooper looks out to the alley, then back to me. Look, there's a lot out there, and with your current mental state, I don't think it'd be a good idea to overwhelm you. Maybe. I don't know. I close my eyes for a moment and take a deep breath. Being left in the dark ain't much better. You'll be fine. I'm sure you've been through worse. I wouldn't know. Cooper actually chuckles at that, before returning his gaze to the alleyway opening. Hmm. Gotta do this in a way that's not suspicious. I think I'll leave that. I think I'll leave that to you. Didn't really offer. Fair enough. After about five minutes, he manages to remove most of the boxes fairly quietly. We're free to leave the alley. I'm both nervous and excited. You said we shouldn't talk, right? Only if absolutely necessary. Whisper if you need to. I'll probably hear it. Why? Um, can we write? Do you have an axiom? A what? I'll take that as a no. He points to his bracelet. I can communicate through this via text, but that's it. What about pen and paper? Cooper looks at me as if I've said something truly bizarre. I, I don't know how to write like that. Wait, what? I didn't use them much as head of class, but I at least know how. Uh, okay. You do? Weird. What the? Like, you're the one to talk. I think to myself, grumbling. Oh, right. He looks over at me again. Uh, he looks over me again. I'm slowly getting used to that. What should I call you? Wait, all the looking over me. Is it just looking past me or, or above me? Huh? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. The thought hadn't crossed my mind. What do I call myself? Cooper pauses again, thinking. Well, until you come up with something, I'll just call you human. Okay. Uh, ironically dehumanizing despite uh, being literally called human. <laughs> Before we officially venture out, we do a bit of cleaning up in the alley. Cooper tells me we should try to avoid leaving anything behind. Sans the jacket he tossed. Sounds a little contradictory. Thankfully there's not much. Just the wrappings of, from our food and... All the vomit, right? Oh. I forgot Cooper's other gun. And the vomit? <laughs> It'd definitely lead to trouble if we left something like that lying around. I'm shocked that he left it on the ground for so long, honestly. As I'm about to try to pick it up, I think to myself... Is it a good idea to touch something like this? Did Cooper genuinely forget his own gun? <laughs> like, that's, that's a bit negligent. Hey, Cooper, you left your gun over here. Is it okay for me to pick it up? Oh, good call, yeah. The safety's on, just try not to slide anything on it. Slide anything? On a gun? I mean, I think the safety slides on a normal gun, technically. Might be a button sometimes. Might get into semantic noise if I interrogate this too much. 
Okay, I know my motor skills are a bit rusty, but I should be able to pick up a gun without firing it, right? I gulp. I'm hovering my hand over it, inches away, before a yellow arm invades my, bi my vision. Relax. I'm not gonna set it off. The wolf casually picks it up and even twirls it. See? Mm-hmm. If you say so. Here. Cooper then carefully takes my arm and plants the pistol into my hand. It's cool to the touch, and smooth. It almost feels like a smartphone screen. But that that puts us in an era. We had smartphones where we left off. We knew, I knew we had phones, but I don't think we specified what kind of phone it was. My grip is firm on it, but I don't know. What, but I don't want to drop it. Still, I do turn it around slowly, getting a decent look at it. It looks cool, but it's not what I would normally picture a gun to look like, though. It's sleek and pretty light. However, it's still a gun, and I don't trust myself with it. It's uh, neat. Here, take it back. Cooper takes it and holsters it back at his hip. I guess giving you a self-defense weapon is out of the question. Would that be necessary? In your position, yes. I wouldn't give the recently concussed person that can barely move on their own a uh, handgun, though. I... It's a bat. You don't, you don't, you don't want to know how that, play, how that plays out. I don't have good news for you there. Why does whoever they why does whoever they are want me so bad? Classified. Figures. You ready to head out? As ready as I'll ever be. He takes out his bracelet, or axiom, and starts to tap away at it. Now that I'm close, I can kinda of make out what he's doing. The screen is pretty clear, even while being somewhat translucent. I can't make out a lot, though. It looks blurry, almost as if censored. You can read that? I can. You can't. It actually is censored, then. Like, it's a it's a privacy screen. Kind of like what we have now, but different. Maybe set up to... It might only be readable by Beastmen, or it might be readable by, like, people that have, like, contacts or something like that. Like, a, like that are matched with it. Maybe his eyes aren't real. He swipes away the screen. No offense, but I'm not going to register you in it. Okay, so yeah, only people that are registered for the device can, can see it as a privacy setting, which means it can somehow selectively filter eyes, which would, which would make you think it's based on... You would think you need artificial eyes, then, to be able to sync up the permissions, but we're not used to the system, so you think we don't have them, but we actually don't know anything about ourselves, so we might... Uh, okay. W whatever that means. I think I know what it means. We're gonna head to a nearby plaza. It's late, but there should be a shop open. For what? Figured you could use a change of clothes. He grimaces. Glad I just got paid. You don't have to do anything. I'll manage. That's nice of you, human, but it's more out of necessity. Your current getup would be more would be suspicious to just to just about anyone. I look down at what I'm wearing. He has a point, though I'm not sure what kind of fashion they have here. If I could choose, probably something with sleeves. The scars along my arms and legs are kind of off-putting, especially to me. That's a rough sentence to have, yeah. Uh, kind of funny, actually, because I'm playing Planescape Torment right now, where you play as an amnesiac covered in stars, scars that you don't know the origins of. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah. I'm not the person to ask about clothes. We'll figure it out when we get there. Okay. We both look over the alley, making sure it's empty enough. Alright. Let's start moving. Tug on my sleeve or something if you need anything. And remember, keep quiet. Okay. With that, we make our way out of the alley.
fade to black. I'm intrigued about what's going on here. I do feel like the pacing's a little slow in this chapter. Particularly the first part where we're disoriented and confused and, st and struggling, but not really talking yet, and tr trying to get up and wobbly and blurry and all that. I feel like it kind of like repeated itself a, f a few too many times to the point where like the whole that chunk probably could have been like 30% shorter while conveying the same information as effectively. It's hard to tell what time it is, but I'd guess it's after midnight. There's no one out on the streets besides a few cars. Some flying cars at that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Cooper was onto something about the scary outside world. What's more is that they're fairly quiet. Just a slight hum. We walk on the sidewalk. The material is somewhat warm against my bare feet. Warm sidewalks. I can't tell what it's made of, but it feels weird. I really wish I had some shoes. Cooper walks along the street, keeping me somewhat close to the walls of the nearby buildings. Their walls look sleek and unnaturally smooth. If I had to guess, they look like the same material that the gun Cooper has. The surfaces look like big phone screens, highly reflective. I don't look long, though, not wanting to see my face. We make it a block or two before I tug on Cooper's sleeve. Our breath has to smell horrible. Cooper peers his ear in my direction. I whisper as quietly as I can. Sorry. Break? Sure. I lean against the wall behind me, taking a few breaths. I was hoping I'd last longer. The fact that it's the middle of the night doesn't help. I'm feeling pretty sleepy. Here. This should help. Before I can ask, he takes out his, his axiom. I think he draws a circle on the screen. As he does, the outline of a circle lights up on the ground. With another tap, Cooper slides the axiom off. And a cylinder rises from the ground, stopping it around my calf. Cooper must see my <clears throat> Cooper must see my stunned expression. What's the matter, old man? Never been to the city before? Hmm. That's a lot of bad news at once. <laughs> This place is so alien that they can manipulate the environment around them with their axioms, which is probably why it looks like a weird surface. And we're being called old when we were definitely a student, and our childhood friend definitely seemed very young. At this point, I don't know if I'm more stunned at what he just did, or what he just called me. Old man? I'm like 26. I spit it out in a hiss. Never seen a human that young with hair that old. Keep it down, would you? He's lucky I'm mature, or else I'd call him out for provoking me like that. I stare at him, sticking my tongue out. I'm so mature. Sticking your tongue out? I huff, and I sit down on the new seat. It's not very big, but it's enough for me to sit fully on it without sliding off. It's warm, almost like a heated seat. Curiously, I glide my hand along the sur along the side. It's almost soft, in that worn, plasticky kind of way. Handy. Cooper rests against the building while I take my break. He's tapping away on his axiom again. I try to look at it some more. I can see some pictures, I think, but that's about it. Looking around, there's not much to talk about in terms of architecture. Most buildings look the same, being eerily rectangular without much detail. The ones that don't, the ones that don't look a bit older, or oh, they all look the same, and the ones that don't look the same, right? The ones that don't look a bit older, 
but not in terms of architecture. I've never seen this style before. They just look more worn out than the rest. Cooper keeps an ear out for the few cars that come our way, but he doesn't seem too worried. Not even for the ones a few stories above us. It's kind of scary seeing stuff like flying cars all of a sudden. I instantly think about a scenario where one malfunctions and I just... It just falls straight on me. Ever the pessimist. I shake my head and stand up. I mean, I'd be pretty terrified of flying cars, honestly. You know, I was kind of primed to imagine like a cyberpunky kind of situation. And it seems to be kind of holding true. Turning to Cooper, I give him the thumbs up. He gives me a puzzled look before doing it back. Albeit a tad weird. Does he even know what that means? This no talking thing isn't going to work. I sighed before gesturing for him to lead the way. He doesn't know what thumbs up means. What is going on? Thankfully, he understands that, and we're walking along again. Once again, I start to think to myself, I've come to accept that I'll be doing that a lot now. Seriously, this place is huge. It's a wonder how people don't get lost around here. I mean, that's just... That's any town or city. <laughs> it is too large for you to mentally keep track of where you are without a map or something. There are signs here and there, but with all the buildings looking so similar, how do they make any sense of it at all? Oop. My thoughts get interrupted as Cooper suddenly pulls me into a nearby alley. What? Shh. He covers my mouth abruptly and huddles me against the wall. I furrow my brows. Where did this come from? Oh, fuck. Did he see one of those guards? I can't see anything out of the alley. Cooper is resting on his side now, blocking me. He pulls me against his chest. His scrawny... My scrawny chest against his built one. This is the closest we've been. With his paw covering my mouth, I can only breathe through my nose. I never noticed it before, but this dog absolutely reeks. My eyes almost water. His musk is overpowering. If the guards don't get me, the stench will. Actually, no. Guards, please, come around the corner. Save me. They don't, as much as I sort of wanted them to. I don't see them, but I can hear the clamping of boots behind Cooper. When they stop, my heart drops. This dog needs to take a bath. They pick up again after a few moments, their steps fading into the distance. I feel like having a very strong smell is probably kind of productive to any kind of stealth if people are beast men. When Cooper removes his paw from my mouth, I take in some fresh air as I move a few steps away from him. I glare at him and whisper in a hoarse voice. Rude? Sorry. They were getting close. They're not the only ones. I actually spit on the ground, getting as much of his musk out of my system as possible. You need a bath. What? Come on, let's go. You think with a nose that good he'd have noticed. I don't even give him time to process that as I pull him out of the alley. Ugh. My bravado ceases quickly, though, as I need him to actually lead me. We don't talk for the rest of the walk, and thankfully no guards pop up. Thinking of that Aster, I'm like, oh, we have, a, we have a protagonist who is lost and confused with a large wolf who they give pushback to, and they're not, and they're not expecting the pushback, and... Like there's a few, there's a few, like, parallels a little bit for the intro. And then you, you grow to need to depend on them. I don't think we're going to be able to go back, though. After another few blocks, Cooper points to a building. It's one of the only ones with a lit sign. Looks like neon. There. 
That's our place. I huff. Thank God. My legs are starting to give out again. What is it? A clothing store, I think. You think? Well, I've never been. It was just recommended on the Axiom. By who? Let's go. Okay. We cross the street quickly. Well, as quickly as I can. It isn't until we're up against the building I finally realize what's been so off-putting about this city. There don't seem to be any doors on most, if any, of the surrounding buildings. This building has some see-through windows above, but here at the ground? Nothing. Just looks like a big wall of plastic. How do we... how do we get in? Hang on. He pushes me out of the way before taking out the Axiom, this time drawing more of an archway on the, stream, on the screen. While he's doing so, an outline in the shape of what he is drawing appears on the wall in front of us. Once it connects, there's a brief flash of light before a new doorway has appeared. Wait here. I have to open one for you. I can't go through yours? No, don't worry. It'll just take a minute. Uh... Before I can protest, Cooper heads into the boutique, and the doorway shuts behind him almost instantly. Well, that's different. Creating your own doors has to be architecturally chaotic, right? It hasn't even been a minute, but the fact that I'm alone out in this strange world is giving me goosebumps. I rub my arms a bit, feeling, really feeling the lack of sleeves. I wonder why I can't feel pain, but I can feel all of this. At least my feet are warm. These heated walkways are nice. I feel like it's going with the computer, with the the cell phone thing. Like I feel like the walkways are heated because everything is like a big computer device thing that just gives off heat, as opposed to like an, a choice. I look around some, and I can, and I think I see a clock in the distance, two forty-six a.m. No wonder I'm so tired. I think head wounds will really take care of that for you, honestly. I yawn and rest against the wall. That seems like a mistake if it opens right there. It's cool compared to the floor, which is weird, to say the least. Man, Cooper's taking a long time in there. I start to get worried. Look, looking to the clock, it's been several minutes. It's a door. I mean, it's a super futuristic kind of door, but it shouldn't take this long to open a door, should it? Starting to get antsy out here. I'm a sitting duck. I turn to face the wall and start to feel around before pushing. Surely there has to be other ways to open a door around here, right? What if you don't have an axiom? This all seems ludicrous to me. As I'm feeling around, the outline of an archway lights up. Before I know it, I'm falling face first into the boutique. I yelp and close my eyes, bracing myself for a plethora of broken bones. Instead, I fall on something sturdy and supportive and smelly. I look up and I'm met with Cooper's concerned expression. I fall onto his chest. Cooper's gaze shifts quickly, though, back to one of annoyance. What are you doing? I was trying to find a way in. You were taking too long. Hmm. <laughs> you want to get off? More than you know. I heave as I basically try to do a push-up to get off of him, but my piddly arms make it difficult. Cooper instead just slowly lifts me up by the collar, like a kitten held by their mother, and gets me off. I can't believe you survived this long. I don't have a retort. It is admittedly a bit embarrassing to fall face first into your escort like that. I just grumble to myself and work on standing up. Oh, my heavens, are you alright? I whip my head around towards the unfamiliar voice. As my heart starts to race, Cooper places a hand on my shoulder. 
Calm down. She's the one running the place. She sa he says with some exhaustion as he hoists me up to stand properly. That's right. Just let me know if you need anything and I'll be there. I'll be there to assist you. She jumps. Oh my gosh, your head. Are you okay? Do you need a doctor? Oh. Right. I'm bandaged up. Before I can respond, Cooper speaks up. He's fine. He just had too much to drink. He then pulls on my cheek a bit, as if scolding me. And he's a fresh set of clothes. Oh, I see, I see. Well, of course. Just let me know if you need anything and I'll be there lickety-split. Uh, thanks. Her energy is a bit overwhelming, but I nod respectfully towards her out of habit. She looks like a small sheep. Maybe no more than four inches, four feet tall. <laughs> Whoops. Her outfit looks like a green bellhop's uniform, complete with a cute and small hat. Before she walks back to her desk, I catch her name tag. It looks expensive, with the name Marantha written in gold lettering. Is that a real? That's not a real name, is it? I've never heard of a Marantha, huh? Fancy, to say the least. Never heard of a name like that, though. Whatever, it's a local thing. Okay, enough gawking. My inner monologue is once again interrupted by my escort, who lightly slaps my back. Hey, what was that for? You're taking up time again. Go find something to wear, something cheap. I rub my back, and for a moment I think I feel something. Ugh, I'm just tired. I'm aware. Now hurry up. He then scoots me off further into the store, while he rests against the wall, fiddling with his axiom. Wow, thanks for the help. I want to get to sleep. In a real bed. In any case, I start to wander around the store. Everything was pretty tacky, to say the least. Lots of weird designs, and most don't look very practical. I shiver. These floors aren't heated. Looking around, I don't see any shoes. If I remember correctly, which is already a stretch, most clothing stores don't hold shoes due to beast men needing specific shapes and sizes. Guess it's not unreasonable for them to not have any. Regardless, I walk up to Marantha's desk. This might be easier than wandering alone. Plus, Cooper would get mad at me if I dawdled. As I walk up to her desk, I realize something. I think she's asleep. Um... Excuse me, Miss Marantha? I get closer and... Yep, she's asleep. She even has a pillow on her desk. I look around for some sort of bell to wake her up. I feel bad, but I do want to get out of here as soon as possible. There's some kind of cube next to her nameplate. I tap the cube and soon enough, sure enough it produces a small ding, instantly waking her. Hello! Oh. Hello, sir. Did I fall asleep again? Uh, uh, hello. Uh, yeah, I guess you did. Oh dear me, I do apologize for that. I hope you weren't waiting long. Her sound, her voice sounds as like a, as if a stuffed animal sheep came to life. She's adorable. It, it's no trouble at all, ma'am. I'm sorry for waking you. Oh, look at you being so considerate. If everyone around here was like you, this job would be heaven. She hops down from her chair to greet me. Definitely a couple feet, short, feet shorter than me. I take it you need some help deciding. Oh, yes, uh, I need some advice. I'm not looking for anything... I pause. Extravagant. Oh, and here I thought you had some of the more tame selections. We had some of the more tame selections around these parts. I guess that explains your accent. She laughs, but I freeze. Oh fuck. This must be why Cooper told me to keep quiet. They could pick me out of a crowd just by talking. What is my accent? Where are you from, sir? She almost trills as she walks me along with the selections. Uh, do I lie? Do I tell the truth? Vermont? 
She tilts her head at me, smile, smiley expression unfading. Oh, wow. What? I've never heard of the place. What province is it in? Uh, hey, what's that? Hmm? Oh, that's by designer. Distraction. <laughs> there is no Vermont. You. Yeah, this is gonna be an issue. I'll have to talk to Cooper about how to handle these kinds of situations. I let her chatter on. It's honestly just pleasant to hear her talk. She asks about my tastes and what I'm looking for. After I give her the rundown, she claps her hooved hands. Oh! That explains why you thought we mainly had extravagant stuff. You're looking for something minimalist. Uh, sure. I just nod. I don't really think of clothes as some sort of art. If she can help me get what I want, that's all I care about. In that case, I think something over here would be perfect. Despite her short legs, she's speedy. I nearly have to jog to catch up with her, which only wears me out more. These were designed by a relatively new designer. He's still up and coming, so I'm sure he'd appreciate your business. I look over and... Yeah, these seem pretty standard to me. Just how I like it. After a few minutes of perusing, I, I pick out a few outfits. They have tags on them, but I can't tell what currency they're in. I think I can make out some sort of stylized P, but that's it. I just don't want to break the bank for Cooper. I think these should be fine. Is there anywhere to try them on? Certainly. Follow me, please. I nod again. Her enthusiasm at this time of night is impressive. She scurries off to another wall and holds out her wrist. Huh. She has an axiom, too. Hers looks different. Cuter than Cooper's. She draws a rectangle on her pink screen and a door opens on, uh, appears on the wall. Here you are, sir. The dressing room. It also has a bathroom if you want to freshen up. When you want to leave, just hit the button on the table. Do you have any questions? I think I'm okay. Thank you for all your help. I really appreciate it. Aw, oh, aren't you just the sweetest? Well, just holler if you need me. With that, she scurries back to her desk. I'm so tired that I can only muster a half wave to her. She's very nice. I look toward the opening and head in. Can Cooper also open the wall to this, or can only she do this one? Because it could almost be like a way of trapping you. It seems to be just a normal way of getting around. That's really just something they don't even think about. But if you don't have an axiom, it could, these are like little prisons, potentially. But this one has a button somewhere, apparently. It's dark for a moment before a harsh, pinkish hue illuminates the area. I have to shield my eyes, dropping my clothes. Sensing discomfort. The lights then tone down drastically, to the point of just softly revealing everything. Is this your satisfaction, customer? Uh, sure, I guess. I don't even question it at this point. Very well. Enjoy your stay. Creepy. I scoop up the clothes and walk around slowly. It's pretty spacious for a dressing room. This place is freaking huge. Who needs this much space to get dressed? There's what seems to be a vanity, along with a large mirrored frame and neon lighting. I'm still far away enough, but it's dawning on me. I have to get a good look at myself. Why am I so nervous? How bad can it be? If my arms and legs are anything to go by, pretty bad. Okay, that's enough. I'm still me, whoever that is. I say that, but I close my eyes as I get closer to the table. After I feel around to find a place to put the clothes down, my, I open my eyes. Wow, my hair is really long. I stroke it again, really getting a feel for the length. It doesn't look like I've eaten much in a long time either. I'm not withering away, but I can definitely see a lot of bones. My cheekbones in particular are fairly pronounced, along with a pasty complexion. Guess I don't get much sun either. This sudden confrontation with my own reflection just makes my mind wander. Where have I been? And with who? 
I can feel another panic attack coming, and I stand up straight. We can panic later. I need to get used to this. What I've become. No mention of looking old, though. So I guess it's just unusual that I have long white hair, and that's what the... And that's what the wolf was responding to, but I just don't seem to actually look old. Is that you would freak out. That would be the, the entire... Uh, that would be the main focus of the whole thing, is you if you look in a mirror and you look fucking old all of a sudden when you thought you were 26, that would be a panic mode. That would be like, oh god, I just... Some, half my life is over, and, it, and I don't know when, when it happened. I, didn't, I don't remember it. That'd be terrifying. I take a deep breath and start preparing myself for what's next. What does my chest look like? I clutch the bottom of my shirt, and although I hesitate for a moment, I decide to just pull the thing off. For a moment, I look away from the mirror, but I glance, then look fully. Wow. I'm not sure if I'm disgusted or just plain shocked. My ribs are easily showing, along with several stitch scars throughout my chest. I trail my fingers over a few of them, which makes me shudder. Didn't really realize it, but my hands are pretty cold. I repeat my new mantra. How the hell did I end up like this? I stare at the reflection in the mirror for a while longer. The only thing I can recognize are my green eyes. I remember Damien using used to compliment them all the time. Eventually I snap myself out of it. As weird as I look, we don't have a lot of time. I'll get used to it, sooner or later. I turn. That's when I met, I met with the weirdest part of my body. Hello. That's especially new, isn't it? Not gonna lie, he looks kinda jacked for all the skinny descriptions. <laughs> Along my spine are several pieces of metal. They look like ports. I'm not very flexible right now, but I managed to get my arm around to feel one of them. I push into one and immediately feel a wave of nausea, almost falling over. There's some sort of a flash, a bright light along with the feeling of, of tightness around my limbs. Fuck. My face was hard enough, but that's not something I'm going to get used to easily. Your face? We only described cheekbones, Not you, you weren't described as old. I shake myself out of my stupor and just rush to get my clothes on, not wanting to look at what the mirror is showing me anymore. Thankfully, it doesn't take long for me to figure out an outfit. It's a black turtleneck and dark pants. I can't tell what they're made of, though. The turtleneck is light, but I already feel like I'm warming up. The, pa the pants almost feel like jeans, but smoother with, with fabric I've never felt before. Probably best not to think about it. As long as they're functional, that's all I care about. I'm ready to leave, so I push the button thing on the table. It takes about a minute for the door to open. I wonder if she fell asleep again. Don't blame her. I'm surprised they have anyone working this late at night. I gather up all the extra clothes in one arm, and my old scrubs in the other. I try to compose myself, still disturbed by what I've become. Waking up and not recognizing yourself is an actual nightmare. Marantha's back at her desk, waving at me. Cooper finally lifts his head from his axiom and walks over to the desk. He doesn't look thrilled. Welcome back. Oh wow, that outfit does look nice on you. Very comfortable. I might need to try that designer out myself. Uh, thanks. I'm not sure if I'm much to look at though. Oh, hush. You're definitely one of the more unique-looking humans I've ever come across. That's, uh... Unique is... A super treacherous compliment. Dangerous territory. He turns to Cooper. Wouldn't you agree? She's beaming. I don't think even grumpy Cooper can ignore that. He looks okay. Unique is... 
Definitely a good word. I rubbed the back of my neck. It wasn't much, but I do appreciate the compliment. After everything in the dressing room, I'm desperate for any boost of confidence. So, how much? Well, let's see. Give me a moment to calculate everything. She takes out her frilly axiom and begins tapping away. I move next to Cooper, wondering what they're doing. Is this how money works around here? More or less. At least in the ritzy cities. They don't trust physical cash. Weird. Is it that weird? We're so close to being that way now. <laughs> okay, cash. Man, I, I fully turned away from using cash until, unless I just need to, basically. Cooper huffs before lifting up his own axiom. I can see him slide the screen to a different window. There are numbers along it. And there. That should do it. She types before sliding her screen forward, and I see it appear on Cooper's. I can actually read it for once. Maybe it's a customer service thing. Cooper reads it too, and doesn't look happy. He grimaces and, and groans loudly. I guess it's expensive. He looks me over again before sighing, tapping a button. I think his signature pops up along with the numbers of on his screen dropping near to zero. Oh. Now I feel bad. Thank you for your patronage, Mr. Krager. Cooper narrows her, his eyes at her, then slides his axiom off with annoyance. We're leaving now. Oh, okay. I turn to Marantha. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again sometime. Oh, you. That's supposed to be my line. She reaches over her counter to shake my hand. Pleasure doing business with you as well, sir. Don't worry about the clothes. I'll take care of them. Thanks. I appreciate it. I hand her the pile of clothes I didn't take, keeping the ones I wore under my arm. I thought we were trying to hide any evidence. Leaving it with a person seems worse than dumping it somewhere. I tried to fold them like she gave them to me, but... Yeah, that was kind of hard. Have a good morning, bo boys. You too, ma'am. Hope you get some rest. We wave to each other, but then Cooper uh, locks his arm around mine, taking us out of the establishment. Well, you should have picked out the clothes if you're worried about prices. I don't know what anything means. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. He says to himself. Guess I was right that it was expensive. Uh, sorry. It's fine. It was my idea. And I'll get paid again soon anyways. Just know that that didn't come cheap. Okay. Thank you. Koofer huffs and nods before letting me walk on my own. We walk again on the sidewalks. However, this time I don't know where we're going. I'm curious about something, though. So... Cooper Krager. He whips around to look at me. I... If you know what's good for you, don't ever say that name again. Okay. Sorry. He huffs yet again and continues on. Ugh. I really don't want to be in a bad spot with him. Sure, he's kind of pushy, but even in just the past few hours, he's done nothing but take care of me. I need to figure out a way to repay him somehow. Uh, so... Where are we going? Home. I pause. I know we're going to resume, but... What about right now? What? No. He turns to me. We're going to my home. You'll be spending the night. This time I stop walking before going wide-eyed. Wait. You're not homeless? I'm partly joking, but with how shady he is and how much he smells, I just assumed he was. He looks completely done with me, though, and he doesn't even give me a verbal reaction. He just keeps walking. I gotta catch up with him. Guess I should expect unexpected things. Like spending the night in this strange world with a strange wolf.
Let's see. Hey, uh, wake up. You're not gonna sleep the whole weekend away, are you? I think those little letters are vaguely hinting at what might be our name, but we can't read it. Mm. Might be tempted if you'd let me. Come on, wake up before I make you. I feel the sensation of Damien ripping my covers off, waking up to a blast of cool air. We're back to the past, in school, and not covered in scars, and chapter two. My eyes have trouble adjusting for a moment, but I remember where I am. Oops, sorry about that. That's all we got of Damien, <laughs> just with waking up. We made it through a whole chapter, I might stop here. I kind of wanted to have like a more definitive plot hook, but I think this is more of a slow burn. I don't think we're going to get there within the, the scope of a let's try. So we just, our, our hook is just going to have to be just the framing of like the past versus the present and the body changes between the those times and the different people in the different locations and like the just the mystery of what the fuck is going on. Because uh, I think it's gonna t it seems like it's going to take a while longer to get to the plot points or something. Uh... So I think, I think we're going to wrap it up here. I've been, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, but this has been Remember the Flowers. If you want to check out this game, there's a link to itch.io itch page in, this, in the description. Uh, I think it's rated 18+, plus, but I don't think it necessarily has nudity in it. But it might have descriptions that are graphic. Or it might just be like, eh. It's a story for adults, whatever. <laughs> Somewhere in there. But uh, I've heard it's pretty promising. As far as uh, the question of whether or not I'll do a full playthrough of it at some point, my general approach is that I don't like to do narrative games that are not finished yet. Like The Smoke Room and, well, like most furry visual novels, basically. Because uh, so, so few of them are finished because the, a lot of them were started in the last few years. Uh, so what, the first thing would be to wait until it's done. And I have no idea when that'll be. Uh, and the other thing is that, like right now with me and Stephanie... Uh, we're working on on Echo forever, and then Arches is finishing, so it just seems logical to go to the sequel of the thing that we've covered so far, and then I don't know, maybe maybe by the time we finish Arches, Chemia or Ontario will be done, and we can go to the sequels to Ad Astra. It just kind of makes sense to stick to the stories we've already started, but that's just such a slow process that uh, I don't know. I would, I'm not against the idea of covering way more fur, furry visual novels because it's fun to just hang out and read these and I could have like a rotating ensemble of people potentially that would, might be interested in doing this stuff. For me the issue is that it uh, they take so long to get through and they fill up the schedule so much and I usually want to alternate with like stuff that isn't just furry visual novels all the time and before you know it that like the process of covering just one of them takes like the, mo the majority of a year so... <laughs> While they are while they are not knocking down my door with an endless series of finished ones to begin with, uh, logistically they are it is difficult to juggle all the ones that I would potentially want to play even when they do come out. So it's all a big question mark. So I wanted to kind of do a let's try of this now instead of ignoring it for years just based on the idea that I might want to cover it one day. Same thing goes for like I'll probably do a let's try of Burroughs and some of the other ones that kind of look like ones that might be more my taste for a full series. But similarly, like, I'm curious about, uh, I think it was called 922, right? Which I think is almost finished or something. And, like, I'm curious about how that one ends. But, you know, <laughs> if I if I wait until there's an opening to do full playthroughs of all these things in the schedule, uh, we'll be waiting a long time. But anyway, thanks for watching, like always, guys. And I'll see you next time. And Echo will be making its return when we're ready. <laughs> it's looking like I might have to cover another game after Signalis that isn't a, that isn't Echo, uh, which I have a few things that come to mind because we just uh, we just haven't finished TJ's route yet, and the goal is, is to finish it so we can go back to it. We I want to finish each route before I start airing it so that it doesn't get interrupted mid-stream. I want all the interruptions to be t to be between routes, not mid-route. Uh, and we, on top of Stephanie being busy with uh, with work and school. We also went to Las Vegas FurCon, so a chunk of her free time was eaten up by a vacation that we went on together with Toaster and everyone. 
and uh, now she has to work even harder to get caught back up, which I'm also doing myself, so... Stuff happens when it happens. In the meantime, more games you can play yourself. See you next time. <laughs>